Hello, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Um, thanks for tuning in in today's session. Today, we are going to make an outdoor mat with three different colors. Um, while everybody's kind of getting on, I'm going to go check one of my cameras because I can hear some feedback. And if you are catching this on replay, Thank you so much for tuning in and still let us know where you're streaming from. That way we can reach out and say hi. Be right back. <laughs> Hello, hello. Okay, so apparently my volume wasn't turned down and now it is. Um, tuning in on the other side of things is Danielle. She will be commenting in the comment section on Facebook. Joe will be commenting in the section on YouTube. And we are gonna do our best to get you all of the products. We're gonna walk through the art. Of course, we're going to cut and then our favorite, we will heat apply. So. Hello, Jensen. Hello, Karen. Hello from Sweden. Um, those of you that have not caught me live or tuned in to where we have, um, you know, done our education on Tuesdays, I am from Kansas City. I'm on the Kansas side, so I always love seeing where everybody is located. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you all for tuning in. We really, really appreciate it. And of course, we hope that you get something out of this as well. So today, I'm looking around and of course, I don't even have my mat. Oh my goodness. Okay, so let's go over the materials really quick. The first one we're going to be using is Thermofilm. This is Kelly Green nice and bright we are getting festive today our um art is definitely geared towards christmas however it does say winter wonderland so you can make the colors whatever you prefer all right the next color that we're going to be using today is electric green from fashion film and one reason why i love this color is because it is similar to our CAD cut metallics, but it is not the same product. So just because we're talking about electric green, don't get it confused that it's in the metallics section. It is actually in the electric section for fashion film. All right. And then the next color we are using is actually red hologram. Um, this is a product that we do not talk about too often it is more of that specialty material and because you guys know that i love using the glitter flakes and the metallics today we're going to be just a little different and use our hologram it's a perfect color especially for christmas um, and then i think this is going to turn out fantastic because we're going to be pulling in hologram we're going to be pulling in electric green we're going to be pulling in um Thermofilm, which isn't a matte, but it's going to have a little bit of a gloss, but it's not going to have a sparkle to it like our hologram or electric. Um, I believe my mat is over here. So give me one quick second again. Okay. Now, this is a black and white... I'm knocking all my cords off today. Black and white check plaid. Now, what you're going to see is this is already done. This side is completed. It does say Be Merry, okay? It is in our Red Harvest glitter, or excuse me, our Red Harvest cat cut glitter flake. And then you've got some trees mixed with thermal film. And then, of course, our cat cut glitter flake as well. Now, what I want to show you guys is how easy it is to make a reversible mat. So um, ideally, right, you could do multiple different holidays or seasons. Um, I know personally I had one of these buffalo plaid mats out through the majority of the year, even through spring and summer. But what you could do is one side could be Thanksgiving inspiration, you know, and then the other side could be another holiday. 
So today we are going to flip it and reverse it, use the side that is not decorated, and we're still going to be in that Christmas theme, but I'm going to decorate the entire mat versus just down below the side. Now, to give you a quick, another quick idea, I down or I downloaded. <laughs> I made this mat with our, um, for our holiday trends. And the reason why I did down below is because if you put a center or a mat in the center of it, you can still highlight the decoration below. So maybe that would be personaliz personalization. Um, maybe it would be like something funny, like go away or leaf packages here. Um, you know, something funny. But in this case, this is meant to not have anything on top of it. All right. So I'm going to quickly show you my setup for today. This is what it looks like. So as you can see, you will be able to see the full operation on pressing. And then we will definitely go through the cutter. Once I'm done cutting, I'm just gonna wheel this back because I do have it on wheels. And then that way it'll just give me a little bit more room to kind of move and flow out through heat applying. Okay, so let's quickly just go over where you can find the products. As you can see in the comments on Facebook, Danielle has dropped them there for you. So you can just click the link, go right to it. But for those of you that are new and just trying to learn more about what Stalls is, I'm just going to quickly share my screen, show you stalls.com, and then, of course, show you where you can find all of the CAD Cut products just to make it a little bit easier for you. Oops, sorry. Let me remove that. All righty. So I have already gone to stalls.com. And when you come right to the website, you'll see um, some banners, of course, some popular things that are going on right now. You can go straight to the shop CAD Cut HTV right here where it says shop now. Or easy, easy step is going to CAD Cut Direct. Now, for those of you that, again, are very familiar or unfamiliar to stalls, we call our heat transfer vinyl CAD cut. So you're not going to find heat transfer vinyl in our category section. You will find it as CAD cut direct. Just select that little guy and then you will go to heat transfer vinyl. From there, you have an entire drop down menu, which makes it two clicks to get to exactly what you need. Um, here you will find thermofilm. Next, you will find fashion film, and then here you will find hologram. Because fashion film is the one I was saying that you've got fashion film, and then you have fashion film electric. I'm just going to show you what that looks like. All righty, now that everything is loaded, you can see it is all on one page. So you're not going to look for fashion film electric, but you will find electric green right here. You'll select that, and then from here, it will pop up. Um, you'll select your yard, your five yard, 10 yard, so on and so on, and then just add to cart and then finish checking out. So I'm not gonna go through every material, just simply because you saw all, the, all of those right there. Okay. So what we're going to do for the art, so this today's art was found off of lovesvg.com. Um, I downloaded it, imported it into cadworkslive.com. And that is C-A-D-W-O-R-X live.com. From there, that's where I did 100% of my editing. And then I will um, send that to VectorCut and then VectorCut We'll then shoot it to my Roland GS24 and we will cut that way. So I'm just going to tell you, if you are taking notes, um, take brief notes and then definitely come back and watch this video because there are several steps to how I created this art. Now, I do have them laid out in my CADWORKS Live file. So we are going to go step by step by step by step. But because um, physically going through it could take just a little bit longer and we have a big mat to heat apply, 
we're just going to highlight the tips. So for those of you that are taking notes on how to go ahead and um, you know, create the art, I highly suggest waiting till the video is end and then go back to that section and then take little notes from, from that way. I learn best by doing and visually. So um, if you are like me, that's gonna be the best way to learn. All right, you guys, so I am going to just quickly remove the website screen. Let's see. And then now let's go over the art. Okay. So like I said, I am, oh, I've got two files apparently open. One sec. Okay. So I am in cadworkslive.com. I do have uh, I do have an account. You do have to go online and register. And remember, everything is stored. It is all stored web-based, so the cloud. So if you are on one computer and then you want to work on art at home, then no, you can easily access all of your files that way. Okay, just to make sure. Okay, good. We are, you're looking at it. So perfect. I'm going to go to my files. And right here, Winter Wonderland. It's very, very simple art. It just took a lot of steps um, and breaking apart. So I'm going to give it a minute because that is not our only file. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Let me zoom out. There we go. I'm going to hit zoom to fit. All right, you guys. So this, <laughs> these are all the wonderful little steps. So what I'm going to do is just kind of zoom in on the main art, and then I will kind of break apart, you know, the steps. Okay. The one thing that is interesting about CADWORKS Live is like you can't scroll around the screen. You do have to select what you're doing. So this is the art, you guys. If we hit wireframe down at the bottom right-hand corner, um, you can see that there is no outline to that. So the biggest thing as you import, so you're gonna click import, select your art from your files, and it will be brought in just like this was. And then we're gonna hit convert to vector. From here, it's just so, so, so simple. You're gonna follow the steps, select the colors, and then once you are done, you will have this created to the right. I'm gonna take the wireframe off. Okay, let me zoom out. And you know what I'm gonna do? I am just going to keep that on there. That way you guys have the largest screen possible. Okay, so I'm gonna just move this up to the side as you can see, this is the one that is created after we have turned it into a vector file format. So it's very simple, black and gray. Mm, I'm going on a black and white rug. Uh, it needs to be, I need more. <laughs> so the next thing that I did was I selected my art and then we are going to shaping and then we will break apart by colors. Once you've selected that, I have separated my little gray sparkles, that's what I'm gonna call them, and of course the winter wonderland in black. All right, now that those are separated, what I'm going to do is double click on my winter wonderland. Here's where CADWORKS Live makes it so easy. All you have to do is click add effect, and then I did the gap outline. Once I selected the gap outline, I just played with my settings a little bit. I turned steps to three. So now I have an outline within a gap outline. And then I wanted the, the outline of my font to be a little bit fatter. I wanted to make it a little bit easier when I am weeding. And then of course, um, you know, those really, really thin stems to art just makes it always just a little bit more difficult so I bumped this, this offset, a 30. And then now you can see we've just added a little bit more detail to the art. That is what we have here. So to quickly show you guys what 
we are working with. This is going to be our, our final art. Really quick, I'm gonna pop back over to the main screen and see if I am missing any questions. Hey James, I completely appreciate this question. So I will definitely keep that in mind for um, definitely for future videos, but I really, really appreciate um, that comment. So thank you so much for the feedback. Alrighty, so I'm gonna go back to the art. From here, I broke the art apart, and all you do is the same thing. You go um, shaping, excuse me, where is it? When you click your art, you will go shaping and then break apart by colors. All I did was drag that black across. I just clicked on a green, I'm gonna make it really bright and green. And then the next step that I did was I changed the gray to red. So very, very easy. Now you can see my art is starting to come together. All right, the next thing that makes it just a little bit more time consuming is from here, I actually broke apart by regions. So what I needed to do was separate that outline from the, the font, that way overall I could get red with green on top of green. So from the outline, let's see, I just selected each individual section. So in this case, I was pretty fortunate. Winter and Wonderland broke apart by um, two fonts, or excuse me, two words. Let's see if I can grab it. So my screen is zoomed in. Let's go 50. There we go. Okay, so what I did was, as you can see right now, I'm selecting the outline. So I'm just gonna send that to the back. And then my Winter Wonderland font is just going to easily break away from that. From there, that is when I created the background of my Winter Wonderland to be green. So I'm just gonna select a random green. Okay, from here, we are going to zoom out again. We are almost done creating the steps. So if anybody has any questions on how to do this, please also feel free to email me at kelly.walters at stalls.com. I'm more than happy to kind of walk you around through all of this. So as you can see, we already skipped this next step. So I pulled apart the winter wonderland, which is actually the outline behind our true font. Okay, so from here, our next step is really just aligning what we want to do. So we can pretty much go from here to the final step and I'll show you how we did it. So as I change that background color, um, I know that, so for us, the electric green is going to go behind um, the thermofilm and the thermofilm is going to sit on top and then the hologram is obviously going to be red. So all I did was then just realign my fonts exactly where I wanted them to be. You can go in and use um, an easier process which would be um, centering. And then I'm just going to lay this on top. I know my screen has selected everything and now it is blue so it makes it a little difficult to see. All right, so let's get back to the final art. One more zoom out, or we'll just do zoom to fit. Perfect. Okay, once I've aligned everything, I went back in and just custom placed those um, dots as I was creating the outlines and working around with the sizing of the art. Um, it made those dots a little wonky, so I just broke them apart and then just selected them where I wanted to be.
Now, so you guys can actually see what the art looks like. I am going to go ahead and just open my final. So small. So this winter wonderland in black and gray, that's what we started with. And the winter wonderland in green, green and red is going to be our final product. So now all we have to do is go to send to vector cut. That's here at the bottom left hand of the screen. This is just going to communicate. It's going to create a file. And then all I have to do is pop that up and my GS24 is already ready to go. All right, you guys. So once I go to vector cut, you won't be able to um, see this screen anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the CADWorks live screen. And then I'm going to pop up vector cut. All righty. So now let's. Now I got to share that screen. All right, you guys. So here is vector cut. This is what I use for our cutting software that ties into our GS24. So from here, you can see that we don't even have the black and white, or excuse me, the black and gray file that we once had because it's not even, um, it, it's not a cuttable file. So you do not have to worry about that if you are, a particular visually person like me, you can easily remove it off your screen before you send it to vector cut, but don't worry. All right, you guys. So here's the other thing. Um, I'm actually going to just remove my screen and then I will go with the full screen up front. That way you can see it. So um, one thing, these materials go between 320 and 330. Thermofilm is, thermofilm is applied at 330 for six to eight seconds. So we are going to stay in the 330 range for application today. Um, hologram and um, our electric green, so our fashion film, both apply at uh, 320 for 12 to 15 seconds, uh, fashion film being the, uh, the 15 seconds. So we are just going to stay right on top with the 330. Now, I want to break down thermofilm just really, really quick. It was really important to me that um, I chose as durable materials as possible. This is going outdoors. Maybe it's going inside too, but there's going to be a whole bunch of feet coming and going over this mat. If, that, if it's outdoors, it's strong chance. Um, well, at least if you're where I am, uh, you may encounter snow. Most of us. <laughs> all encounter rain. Um, so if you're going through the elements, then I just wanted to make sure we didn't have a super thin material on there. Now, fashion film is a fairly thin material, but with us putting thermofilm on top of fashion film, thermofilm is abrasion resistant. It's, it's awesome for sports gear, uh, uniforms, anything where you might have some type of contact or you know, bodies or anything else rubbing up against you. So for me, thermofilm on top of this mat makes perfect sense. Um, now, the other thing is hologram is going to be um, very, very small in terms of design, but it shouldn't also pick up the texture of the rug. That's one thing I kind of wanted to make sure is that our art that is going on top of something that is woven, right? You're going to have, you have detail and texture in this. I don't want to see a bunch of bumps and grooves in our mat. To me, that's going to take away um, from the design. Now, if that's what you want, it's all, it's all yours, right? Okay. So from here, um, we are going to go ahead and cut our um, electric green first. I believe my cutter is already set on the force. Otherwise, we're just going to test it and then we'll start cutting it. So I'm going to send you to the front view. And then we're going to start cutting. So I am just going to make sure that I've got my art popped up. 
to where I can see it. And then I'm selecting the right color. So give me just a quick second. The other thing to make sure you're doing is um, all of your art needs to be mirrored. You will see me in just a quick second. Okay. Let's. All right, you guys. So now for the most part, like I said, this is fairly simple art. We shouldn't have too many crazy details on it. Um, the biggest thing is just going to uh, making sure that we have all of the outline removed where we need to. This is really, really odd doing it from <laughs> behind. So let me let me just get my my ground here. Now what I'm doing is I am just aligning the pinch rollers and that is to make sure that we can also maximize all of our material. I am going to have to go um, vertical on this. I'll have to do my art this way because we need to make sure that we are utilizing the entire space of the mat. And I just now realized that I never measured this guy. So let's see. Eighteen, sixteen. All righty. So what I'm going to do is just quickly adjust my art to be, let's see the correct width because I know it's smaller than what I had. And I want this to be a big kapow. <laughs> I want it to be an in your face art. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can bump it up to 20. So all I'm doing is in my vector cut, I am just quickly adjusting the size. Um, I'm gonna take it to about 20 inches and then that will make it, we're gonna go even bigger. We're going big today, people. Let's see, let's go 22. So because our heat press is a 16 by 20, we will do half and half as we are applying. Okay. All right, I have my art lined up how I needed it. I still think I could go just a little bit bigger, but we're gonna keep it at 22. All right, I'm gonna pop you back over to uh, the full screen again. All right, so just gonna toss some materials behind me. So what I need to do, I've already got my pinch roller lined up in both of my sections. And what I need to do now is just make sure that we are going to go to the edge of the material. Obviously I've just popped this in there, set the pinch rollers. Now we just need to make sure that our cutter knows exactly what we are working with. This is very odd to go <laughs> over it. All right, we've got 13.4 inches in width. So I've just adjusted that in vector cut. So now all I'm doing is just getting that set up. And then now I am selecting the correct color that we are cutting. All right, I need to check my four, so we are at 140 grams. Um, I did cut some fashion film yesterday, so I know for me right now with the blade that I have in there, 90 grams of force works fine. So everything is set for that. I am plugged in to my USB port. 
And then now we can just start getting, we can start cutting on this. Once I adjust my correct port. All right, now what I'm going to do, because I don't have um, a place set up for weeding purposes, I am going to use my heat press to help me weed today. Uh, fashion film is very, very tacky and adding some heat um, under, um, you know, where your carriers helps release the adhesive just a little bit. I don't want to do too much because I don't want anything popping off. And then um, both fashion film and thermofilm are hot peels. So I will go in with my hologram last because it is a very cold peel. Okay, let's see. These are fairly large prints, so it's gonna take just a little bit. Um, let's see. Um, Dale, are you talking about my shoes? <laughs> I promise they're not slippers, they're actual shoes. <laughs> But there, there have been times I've been tempted to wear my house shoes, um, and then maybe we'll just do a comfy, comfy clothes decoration day. Uh, let me know if you are talking about my <laughs> my shoes. Oh, you guys are funny. Okay, so next, this is done. So what I'm gonna do is just actually set this aside down here. Watch it, it's gonna fall off. All right, next, we are going to go ahead and cut our thermofilm. Now, I will need to do some test cuts on this just because I know 90 is probably not going to cut that. All right, so I didn't have to do anything to adjust my pinch rollers that just worked very nicely in there. I'm gonna go back. We do have to, of course, go back to the edge. Now, just to kind of gauge where I am at with 90 grams of force, um, I am just, ooh, here we go. Just gonna go ahead and quickly test it. Let's see. And there we go. It's like I may it may not have even fully cut and it did. So that is not bad, but I cannot see the cut line whatsoever. I'm just going to go bump up to 110 and see if that's gonna to be too much or maybe that's just gonna be perfect. Okay, you guys, I am cracking up how odd this is. Okay, so it's still cutting fine. I still have the fine, the, the small, let's see if you can't, you can't see this. I know I'm too far away, but very, very small sections. Um, I'm going to do one more. I'm going to bump up to 120. Enter. Test one more time. I might have the old weeder that I complained about last week, you guys. Let's see. All right. 120 seems to be the same. So we're just gonna keep it at that. Um, let me see, I did see a question. So Karen, your question is, which button did you press to make the HTV material pull back to the cut point? How do you stop the roll from dropping? So I actually just have a one yard material, if that's what you're asking. So right now, it is just hanging out below the cutter. Um, but what I'm using is there's two up and down arrows, if that's what you're asking about, Karen. So all it does is just push the material forward. And because we already set its origin point, so the stopping point, it's not going to go any further. Um, 
to find the edge of the material, it's actually in the menu section. Once you load your material and initiate uh, the spring for the pinch rollers, it does automatically pop up to find the roll or the edge or a piece. Let's see. Ah, okay, yes, I do hit edge. And then of course, um, oh, sorry, you guys. She said, never mind, you hit edge. I use the computer to adjust the force and the speed. Um, and this question is coming in from YouTube. So in my case, um, I have to use the cutter to adjust all of that. Um, okay, so what I need to do now is to make sure that all of our testing, all of our test cuts are out of the way. So I'm just gonna shoot the material down, move it over and reset the origin versus, you know, messing with this. Okay, um, can't see, so I'm just gonna shoot it out just a little bit more. All right, I've got my new origin. My force is set for Thomo film. And let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other green. I'm still at 13.4 in the width of the material, so I don't need to adjust that at all. Right. Cutting that. Now, one thing you guys, I do wanna actually go ahead and show you is Let's see, okay, I am just, you're gonna see me, the material cutting and the screen. One thing, if you get a roll of material and you don't know what the heat applications are, how to cut it, those type of specifications, because those are very, very important when it comes to heat printing. Again, you'll go back to that CAD cut section on our website. So here I'm gonna go to hologram. Give it just a minute to kick in. It will kick in. <laughs> I know you can do it, internet. Okay, well, I guess we can, there we go. Um, here you will find details. So you can find great information like washability, the stretch and rebound. Clearly it's giving you a two. It is not gonna stretch and then rebound back. Um, of course, it's got a high gloss, shiny prism. Um, and then the other thing that I love personally is the user guide. We wanna make this available at your fingertips. That way you can, you know, decorate correctly. So here you can see the one color application instructions, 10 to 15 seconds, 320 degrees firm. So we'll be a seven, eight, nine. And then of course, we have all these cutter instructions right here. So I am, um, I'm using a Roland, so I'll be between 110, and 130. Um, and, oh, excuse me, that's using a 12 blade, so I'll be between 90 and 150, which is a huge range. So I will actually test this material at 120 and see where we need to adjust from there. Okay, so let's go back. All right, our thermofilm is done, so same thing. Those cut lines are so small, or not small, it's large art. Very, very hard to see right now. Um, and then let's get our Let's see. Okay, so from here, same thing again. Just gonna look for our pinch rollers. Adjust those. Menu. Same thing we've been doing the entire time. It's gonna go to the edge. Now, because this is a roll, I am sending material um, basically in between the feeder and where the rolls are. Um, 
yeah, rolls, the, the things that are holding the material. <laughs> that way I don't have any material flying off of my cutter. Um, like I said, we need to do a test cut. And as you can see, I was messing with it at one point. So I am gonna turn around and just cut that, that way we can start nice and clean. All right, let's grab this guy. And actually 120 is actually very, very nice. I just need a, let's see. Okay, perfect. So I'm actually gonna keep this at 120. I'm not breaking the surface. Now, normally I would advise against wasting this type of material, but I didn't want to, um, you know, possibly be testing on something that maybe I did cut at one point. Um, I'm not feeling anything, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. So I'm going to stick it out just a little bit, create my new origin, and then now I'm going to come over to my red. Let's see, 18.3 is my new width of material. And we're gonna cut. All right, so here's a little tip about hologram. For those of you that are maybe used to working with um, rhinestones, or maybe you don't wanna work with glitter flake anymore, or you want something to be able to contrast with glitter flake so you have the really high um, textured, very sparkly glitter flake, and then maybe you wanna combine it with a very shiny, smooth hologram. You can actually do a kind of like rhinestone template or just create a bunch of dis different circle sizes and then cut that and then those would be your rhinestones. So it's more affordable, it is cost effective. When you are weeding the material, just take your time a little bit, that way you don't have a little, um, a little dot pop up. Um, if it's scattered and it doesn't really matter, then all the power to you, but that's a very, very easy way to create um, kind of like a rhinestone effect within art without actually using rhinestones. So you could take, say, um, ultra weed, and then just make sure that you are scattering, you know, hologram or glitter flake dots throughout the whole thing if you just kind of want a new pop without actually utilizing those materials in the font. So there's a little tip on that material for the day. Okay, as you can see, um, this is doing pretty well. This is an outline, so it actually should be, you know, fairly easy when it comes to weeding because we're just going to take out the big chunks in that material and leave the outline to um, apply all over. And then I do have some of those red dots scattered throughout because I just kind of wanted a little bit more of a glistening effect. To take it up another notch, you could have made dots with all two other colors just to add a little bit more dimension. Let's see if you guys have any questions, go ahead and type them below. Normally it does take just a little bit um, for those questions to come through as that art is finishing cutting. Um, now's a really good time that I can answer everything even though that is done. <laughs> but still go ahead and get those questions into, this, into the comment section that way um, as they are there, I can go ahead and come back and answer them once we are done. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, you guys, is I am going to release the uh, brakes on the cutter. I'm gonna move it out of the way, that way I can just have some more room to kind of move around and get situated. So um, 
excuse the the noise <laughs> the noise will happen so just taking out my usb cord that is one thing i love about having a cutter on rollers there we go is that it is just going to move out of the way nice and easy Okay, making sure I'm still connected to my cord. You can see me, we're all good. I'm gonna get that material out of the cutter. All right, now the next thing I'm gonna do is just trim this down because these are big O pieces. All right. I'm gonna set this aside. Let's weed our thermofilm first. Now I gotta find the cut line. All right, what I'm gonna do is just kind of make a little torn section so I know exactly what I'm working with here. Thermofilm is extremely, extremely easy to use. So if you use thermofilm in your everyday environment, then weeding shouldn't be too difficult for you. If it is, let's chat, let's figure out why. Okay. So first thing I'm gonna do is just remove, obviously, the, the outer material, the box that I created. As you can see, you guys, this is just, it peels like butter. It's so, so easy to work with. Now this is a thick material. If you are used to using Ultra Weed on, say, a Bella Canvas, um, a District Alternative Apparel, you know, those, um, even Hanes has a really new, excuse me, a really new, a really soft garment out there. If you're used to using that, um, definitely give a couple of our other materials a shot um, just so you can have that feeling where it feels like there's nothing on there. Like I said, it's perfect for, um, you know, uniforms, things that you need durability on. Duffel bags is great. So just quickly weeding all those ginormous cavities, which makes it a delight versus doing something that's like a four by four, right? Now, really fast, um, those of you that are tuning in today or maybe you're catching on replay, um, do you guys make home decor? Um, I'm always curious for those of you that maybe are selling more on Etsy, um, Maybe you just sell on Instagram or Facebook. Do you do more custom? Let's see, so here is Winter Wonderland. My little dot did pop off, so like I was saying, um, the heat can make that pop off. So, really fast, I'm going to check my scraps. If not, I'm not gonna worry about it too bad because we're still gonna have green underneath I did find it because we do have a little bit of a, a tap to the carrier. Um, it should just pop right back on there. All right, the next material, you guys, is this fashion film. And like I said, fashion film is very, very tacky. The heat will definitely help weed this. I actually don't mind um, weeding fashion film. It's one of those that, yes, it's it's a tacky carrier, but I don't know. It just doesn't it doesn't bother me. I'm sure if I had to weed like a hundred pieces of the same design, then you know I would maybe have a different opinion. Um, I do not want to basically activate the platen by initiate by engaging the the heating element to this because if this gets too hot, like I said, this carrier is going to start to lift and I just don't wanna take that chance. All 
All right. So again, this should be fairly easy artwork. Our outline is actually going to be the fashion film electric. You can layer fashion film, you can layer thermofilm. So in this case, it actually saves us a step because I don't have to go in and weed the cavities inside of the outline along with the, you know, the rest of the material. Yep, now it's sticking together. Now, the other thing that I was saying, um, because we do have some texture within the rug, I also don't mind the thickness that we're going to be creating with adding not only thermofilm, because like I said, it's thick, but also with um, adding that second layer of fashion film. Crazy weeding, I know. Now we will tack these down versus going for the full um, 12 seconds on each material. My fashion film is getting, um, I'm gonna say a little bit stringier, a little bit thinner, and it's because that heat from the heating element is definitely activating that. Let's see. Okay. Oh, found a little spot. Now you guys, the plaid rug that we're going to be using, I did find it on Amazon. The link was posted above. Uh, Danielle was awesome and went ahead and sent that link for you guys. Today I checked and the rug was $11.89 in cost. Um, because you should be able to do both sides or you could completely customize it with personalization, um, you should definitely warrant a, uh, higher value for that. One side could automatically be done and then you could offer a customization for the second side. Um, the way I'm thinking about this is say Vistaprint, right? Um, if you are ordering business cards from Vistaprint, there is one set price for uh, the front side. But if you want to add the second side, that's in, then it's additional cost. So there's three ways that you could offer this rug to your customers. One side done as is, second side add a personalization, third time would be to completely customize the colors or choose your art with the front and then choose your personalization on the back. So just a way to kind of um, be able to cater to multiple different price points and maybe to multiple different customers. I may not want my last name you know, everywhere on my house, but I have some friends that absolutely love putting it on anything home decor. So just being able to offer a couple of different variations. Yes, yes, that is more time on the back end when it comes to production, but just make sure you have that added cost in there. Okay. It's just gonna layer those on top. Now, um, I am going to attempt to weed our hologram on the press. But if it starts having some issues because of the heat, um, then I'm going to drop to that table below. Now, when it comes to hologram, I would be cautious of going very, very fine detail um, just because it is a thicker material. There is there's no stretch and rebound in this, even though it had a two on the website. All right, next thing we need to do is take out the filler piece. Now I do have to go just a little bit slower with this 
So be patient with me. I'm also checking to make sure we don't have any really small cavities pop up and try to come with me. I just caught one. I think I might catch another. Now, I do love this font. Like I said, this is from Love SVG. So this is not something that I created on my own, but I do, I kind of like that it almost has a graffiti hue, a, hue, a graffiti look to it. You'll see me just start throwing my scraps on the floor. I normally go in and pick those up after. Sometimes I just need a clear slate. You guys, 320 degrees is really hot. <laughs> but it's gonna look great, right? Okay, we are about halfway through reading our hologram. So as you can see, it is, it's coming together. Just gonna take, just gonna take a minute for this guy. Oh, I thought we had a nice flow. <laughs> Let me see, there's a little spot right here. Now, um, I am gonna talk about Love SVG just for a second, a little bit. Um, they had some really cute um, holiday ideas on there. I saw Joy to the World in an ornament style, which I thought would also look really good on this type of rug. Um, and then of course they just had several simple sayings, which um, if it's black and white, obviously you can go in and really just make it your own. So I think I need that. So close. All right, just a couple more cavities. I'm gonna reset this E. And then we are done. I can't get it. All right, so. This is what it looks like. There's a couple of spots that I need to grab. So right here. Right here. So this one was obviously the one that took the longest when it came to the art. And now just because it will be the last piece, I just wanna make sure that it is all nice and clean. Obviously if we see something before we can go in and remove it before we heat apply, but. Okay, I think we're done. Oh, one more.
All right, you guys, that is what the last piece looks like. Um, before we do heat apply, I will just make sure I'm not covering up anything else. Okay. Now I do already have my press set at 330 degrees. I have each hit set for eight seconds. Um, and the reason why I have that is because when I had heat applied this um, mat before, it took just a little bit longer versus tacking something down. But I do want to make sure that I just don't go over on tacking. That way we don't um, adjust the art in any form. Okay, I'm going to set, I think that might be one. The first one we are going to do is going to be our fashion film metallic. And that's because the thermal film layers on top of that. We will need to go ahead and pre-press. So I'm just going to go ahead and pre-press as much as I possibly can. I'll also be able to test my pressure. Use a cover sheet just for protection. All right, I'm at a six, so I am at a medium pressure. And for that hologram, I can just give it one little swoop and then it'll take me to a seven. Just going to slide this down. Now for today's session, I am going to use some thermo tape just to kind of get that initial midpoint. So pulling that out. Now for me, I'm just going to lay this on the ground. To find my middle, I am just going to make sure that I have the bottom and our two um, edges just lined up, crease that in the middle. And then right now I am just going to eyeball where it is. Now this is pretty tacky on the carrier, but for... Um, purposes of, you know, potentially it adjusting, I am just going to use adhesive tape and just pop it to the side. Like I said, we're just going to go ahead and heat apply for eight seconds. Now I am not going to peel the carrier until it is obviously all applied on there. From there, I'm just going to move it over. Whoop. Now, I won't need to use the thermo the thermo adhesive or the adhesive tape again because um, we will already have our main color down. Let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and just do it in the middle one more time. Again, this isn't something that I, you know, somebody's going to be wearing. The likelihood of it getting washed weekly is very, very slim. Um, so I just really want to make sure that that material is adhered to the mat because it is going to have um, some footprints come over to it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just gently peel. That way, if anything needs to be adhered again, it can. This is what will collect all of my scraps. All right, now I am gonna go ahead and do this side one more time because I see a couple of pieces lifting. All right. From here, there we go. Everything is sliding. 
just gonna lay it back down on the ground really fast. Let me just show you how this looks. Um, you have that metallic hue to it, but it is minimal. It's not in your face. Um, the hologram's gonna provide just a little bit of that. All right, so I'm just gonna make sure that my thermofilm goes on top. Just gonna lay it in there. Again, another eight seconds. We'll do this twice, and then we will finalize with holograms, um, 15 seconds on each side. Now, I just, like I've said before, you guys, I just love working with the thermofilm on mats because there's just something about the way ma the material lays over texture. It just does very, very well. And it makes it very, very easy to work with. As you can see, I didn't have any issues applying this. Again, another piece to pick up scraps. And the final, wherever, oh, right here. So same thing, just gonna bring it back down here. Or actually, let me show you what this looks like. Okay, so you can see there's just a little bit of dimension in this. Still kind of went with the whole tonal effect. Okay. It's funny, the tile is zapping the heat. Okay, cover sheet goes over. Uh, like I said, adjusting my pressure to make sure we are now in the um, heavy, which uh, that one little crank did bump us up to eight. And I noticed that we did eight seconds. So I'm just going to change that oops, to seven and then the next one to 15. That way we don't have to worry about, um, you know, the time going forward. So we're almost done. I hope you guys are really, really excited for this. Um, I love this idea and concept and just making something just a little bit different. Okay, going to slide that down and over. We did have just a little bit of a shift as the fashion film did um, shrink just a hair, so it kind of adjusted our thermofilm and the lines a little bit. So I would almost go um, cooler on that temperature because it definitely um, needs that, or excuse me, not cooler. I would stay in that temperature, but then um, go for a smaller time, but heavier pressure because we really needed to make sure that that fashion film would get into those fibers. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and press in the middle, just knowing um, that this is going to be the midpoint of our design. Like I said, I'm going to let it cool, so I will put it back on the tile. The tile will zap out the heat, and then we'll peel, and I'll show you the final product. So I'm just pressing for the full 15 seconds now because we aren't doing any more layers on top. Okay, so without peeling... This is, let me make sure you guys can see this. Without peeling, this is our final design. So you have a little bit of pop. You do have that winter wonderland. Um, I think you could put definitely certain colors of glitter flake in there to make it sparkle just a little bit more if you wanted that. Um, you could do so much. Maybe you didn't want words, but this time you wanted a pattern. You could do stars all over it. You could do, you know, Christmas bulbs. You can really just kind of let your mind run free on it. Now, if you don't do home decor, but you are looking for new ideas for apparel, this would be really cute on a sweatshirt 
fleece is very, very trendy right now. And that's another way to kind of, you know, keep that three color design, put it on a shirt, um, and then maybe incorporate some buffalo plaid from patterns in that as well. Okay, checking it. Still so cold, or excuse me, still so hot. Hello, hello. Okay, so while that is cooling down, I'm gonna see if I miss any questions from you guys. Let's see, ooh, Dale, great recommendation. Thank you so much. I will definitely go and check them out. Uh, Patrice, yes, um, home decor is huge right now. It is crazy. Let's see, you guys. Um, I see you guys have <laughs> been discussing my shoes. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys are so funny. Um, okay, so let's take a look at, let's see if this is, um, you know, ready to peel. Hold on. Okay, there is a hologram piece that did not um, get released. I'm going to go ahead and peel it. That way you guys can see the finished product. Get on with your day, go and create this, and then I'll go back in and press it just to make sure it does keep adding to the design, but the outline of the art is done. So I'm gonna toss you back to the front. Okay, so I'm gonna pop it up here. So as you can see, I'm weeding it. This guy is lifted just a little bit. It's not a flexible product whatsoever. So um, just making sure that it is really in to those fibers. This is the one that um, didn't get it heared, but it is kind of stuck on there. Okay, here we go. This is the final product. You can see you've got some shine from the electric. The thermal film is um, a gloss, you guys. So you're gonna see gloss from that. And then of course, um, you know, the hologram, you're getting a whole nother glossy look. I keep, you know, waving it because it's gonna take on different tones and, and textures. But this was, I, I love it. It looks really glossy, but another thing that is nice, you could go in and just kind of wipe it down if you needed to, because everything is a very, very smooth surface. I wouldn't recommend foam or CAD cut foam. I wouldn't recommend our CAD cut uh, flock too, just because those have very, very soft surfaces. Um, so for me, I would want to make it as, I don't know, cleanable, wipeable. Um, as possible. Flock, I think, would be awesome to do on something like this, but um, durability-wise, I'd have to test it, and I would be the person to test and, you know, come and track dirt and see how it works, but not saying it won't work, just saying I would recommend testing. So, okay, you guys, I am going to go make sure that that hologram is really sealed onto this rug. Um, I, if you guys make something like this, send it to us, tag us on Instagram. Um, make sure you follow us on Instagram. Make sure you stay up to date with us here on Facebook. If you're tuning in from YouTube, make sure you have subscribed. That way you can get all of the new education as they are currently um, you know, added on. Let me see. So Jenna, great question. Um, I am currently in the scouts for um, kind of home decor like this for a good wholesale location because, you know, everything that I know from SNS, uh, Sanmar, Alpha Broder, um, you know, all of that, that's more apparel geared um, versus getting pennants, rugs, um, even canvas. Um, I don't know a wholesaler on that. So if anybody has any recommendations, definitely send them our way. That way we can test it out and then, you know, get it out to our peeps. Um, so Jenna, stay tuned. I would love to have an answer for you on that. Can you put different colors of used? Oh, can you put different colors you've used and type of HTV? Um, Melinda, do you mean on this or... 
Um, the, the products that were used are definitely posted above on Facebook. So scroll, uh, we're going to be down here in just a second. So once the video has, um, finished, finalized, you'll be able to go back through the video, check out the comments and then Danielle, um, our team in Michigan, she has posted all of the links of everything we've used. So that should be able to get right to you. Um, okay, you guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Kelly Walters and I hope you have a fabulous week and stay tuned for next week's education from me on Tuesday and Jenna on Thursday.